Our travels around the southern region of Puglia have brought us here, Gallipoli. Whether you like your 15th century architecture or wonderful seafood, this is the city for you. Let's go check out the old town. Coming up, we walk you around the main attractions of this charming coastal fishing city lapping the Ionian Sea and find out why it's a great place to stop and relax for a couple of days. Make sure you watch till the end for the golden glow and vibe of the city at night. Gallipoli seems to be split into two halves really. You've got your old town which is kind of on the little islet which is yeah full of your 15th century buildings, churches. There are some restaurants there, bars to choose from and then the amazing sea views pretty much from everywhere. Currently in the new town if you like which it's kind of centered along this big main road, Corso Roma. Buildings here are kind of like nondescript, but there's more restaurants and a couple of churches to look into if you're interested. Um, I had a look on Google Maps and there's some interesting places for dinner. So I think we'll probably come back here later for a pizza maybe. Gallipoli can also be reached by train or bus. And if you plan on arriving by train, you'll arrive obviously at the train station, which I'll show you in a sec. It's probably about a 15, 20 minute walk from there into the center of the old town. Crossing over the bridge now from the new town into the historic quarter. And this bridge sort of connects the old town. It's on like a little island and as you walk over you sort of pass by the, I don't know if it's a citadel or whether they class it as a castle, but the water around here is absolutely beautifully clear. You can see the fish and uh, it's really delightful just walking across. It is indeed a castle and dates back to medieval times. In the past, the old town would have only been accessible via a drawbridge. The castle now houses a museum. Whilst we chose not to go in, apparently the echoing towers that held the cannons is quite impressive. Once you get over into the old town area, then the parking situation is restricted and uh, it's difficult to find a space and only at certain times of the day are you able to do it. So do check that out before you come this side and, and go across into the Old Town area. As you dive into the Centrio Storico, the first thing you'll notice is that it's a complete mix of busy trading streets and quiet picturesque residential lanes. The maze of alleyways make it easy to lose your bearings, but it doesn't really matter. There's always something beautiful to see, and eventually you'll end up on the outer city wall promenade that encloses and protects the old town. Just like most other old towns we've visited on our travel series, the shops are a good mix of ceramics, Italian staples like quality olive oil and dried pasta. Dotted in between all of these are cafes and restaurants that line the streets and piazzas, many of which become very popular after dark as you'll see later. So now's probably a good time to browse the menus, get some ideas for dinner, and maybe pop in and book a table. So something to note when you're in Italy, if you ask for a latte, make sure you ask for a cafe latte, otherwise you really will just get warm milk. If you're looking for something historical as you ramble through the narrow alleyways, then head for the centre and Cathedrale de Santa Agata. Built in the 1600s, it has a wonderful Baroque facade. Local builders use local stone to create its imposing structure and chiselled figurines. At night it glows golden bathed in light.
If you like that sort of design, don't miss next week's video on Lecce, as much of the city looks like this. Inside, frescoes adorn the ceiling and walls. It's usually quieter in the daytime and is free to visit. The Diocesan Museum of Gallipoli exhibits religious art and objects in an 18th century Baroque building. Worth noting lots of places close between 1.30 and 5.30 p.m. for siesta, so don't try and visit during those times. In one of the side streets we found a golden coloured statue of Padre Pio, who was made a saint by the Catholic Church. Why the statue is here I was not able to establish, maybe you know in the comments. Having weaved our way through the streets, let's break out to the outer island walls and walk around the sea promenades which are just stunning. around the island you've got amazing sea views and these really kind of old almost like falling down some of them buildings giving off kind of like a Havana vibe not that I've ever been but kind of what I imagine Havana to be like In the northern part of the promenades, a very popular sandy beach gives way to crystal clear swimming water. Many locals and tourists alike relax here for a day, with restaurants, bars and snack vans selling paninis close by, meaning you never need to stray too far away from the water. A private boat harbour was recently added so people can sail down the coast and dock for a few hours. It's also here that people like to do rock jumping and snorkelling just off the sea breaks. Gallipoli has a number of other beaches along the coastline, some public and others that require an entrance fee. They are most like beach clubs with DJs and a bar and can be fun with a group of friends. The rocky beaches, whilst not so comfortable, still attract visitors for a more quiet place to relax and swim and watch the boats and kayaks go by. There's less facilities out here, so be sure to bring some food and water if that looks appealing. We've just stopped off at Cafe Del Mar. A um, couple of aperols, of course. Thought we'd get a light bite for lunch. Got a margarita pizza, nice and simple. And size gone for some tuna and capers bruschetta. Uh, my pizza was five euros, and Sai, I think yours was like seven euros. So yeah, not bad. Prices for food and drink are reasonable, and the Old Town perimeter has a good choice with that all important sea view. Several interesting churches are along the perimeter of the old town facing the sea. Most allow you to just walk in and grab some shade whilst looking at the architecture. So behind me is a little bar called Buena Vista and a good tip is if you want to sit somewhere and have a drink as the sun goes down then this is the spot to do it and everybody seems to come here and we'll pop by later and you'll be able to see how busy it gets but what a beautiful sunset you can have on a sunny day.
as you're walking around town, you'll see all the fishing boats. And Gallipoli is famous for its seafood. On the menus in restaurants, you'll see fresh tuna, swordfish, prawns, and some more kind of unusual things like sea urchins also seem to be pretty popular. It's quite interesting just to watch the fishermen at this time of day, they're sort of cleaning out the boats and mending nets because all the fish has uh, already been sold to the restaurants today and that'll be on ice all the way through the day and in the evening it'll be put out on display just outside the restaurants for you to pick what you want. As the sun starts to drop down towards the horizon, the energy of the old town starts to grow and people appear from everywhere to grab a space on the fortified walls to take in the sunset. Those left on the beach sit and stare, others fill the seafront bars quickly ordering a drink, camera ready for what turned out to be a lovely sunset. If you're looking for something informal and fishy, then head to the fish market at dusk right next to the castle. The little stalls have opened up, displaying a wonderful array of seafood ready for you to pick. It's then cooked and served to you on some rustic, no thrill seating. It's really popular and bustling. Select what you fancy and then they cook it up there and then for you. Nice. Very fishy, isn't it? So fishy. Oh, fishy. <laughs> the bridge connecting to the new town became a street market with vendors selling everything from olive oil, sea sponges and tourist ceramics and trinkets. In fact, as we walked into the new town for dinner, the Corso Roma was full of stores lining the street. So last night we were in the old town and pretty much every restaurant around there is South Italian cuisine so it's really heavy on the fish. Tonight we've come into the new town, we really fancied something a bit more meaty. So we found this place, it's called the Brasserie. Uh, it's quite cool, you order off a app and we've gone for a couple of burgers and a couple of interesting sounding um, kind of like Italian meatball things we think, but we'll show you. Here's our starter. We've gone for some cornflake chicken. These are the Italian meatballs and some onion rings. Let's dig in. Here we are, the main event has arrived. Two massive burgers. Um, mine has loads of cheese and some sun dried tomatoes. Sa, si, yours looks like double burger, cheesy. Maybe some onions in there as well. And some chips. That's good. Oh, that one's filling. If you fancy something a little bit non-Italian, head to Brasserie, it's pretty good. Did you like that? Yeah, very nice. Decent service. 
which is kind of hard to get in Italy sometimes, but yeah, decent place. Back into the old town and the place is buzzing after dark. This is the busiest time of day and when the restaurants, bars and cafes really do fill up for the evening. We visited in August and so many Italians were holidaying here from other parts of Italy. It may well be quieter at other times of year. A magical feel comes over the historic quarter with everything bathed in golden yellow lights. Despite the crowds, it's the perfect place to be on a warm summer's night. Just strolling around the street, you probably walked earlier in the day. It really feels like a different place. The great thing about wandering around is you always see new things, and deep in one of the alleyways was this imposing entrance to the public library, one of the oldest in the region. It has a magical entrance through the old stone staircase. I imagine the tree is a few hundred years old too. There is loads to see and do in Gallipoli, and it definitely should be one of your destinations when in southern Italy. If you like Gallipoli, then you're sure to love next week's adventure when we dive into the Baroque provincial capital of Lecce on the last leg of our Puglia travel series. Whether you like finding hidden piazzas, gazing up at ornate Baroque architecture, or lazy lunches with a good glass of red wine, Lecce has it all. We'll take you through all the sites, including our stay in the sumptuous royal suite at Torre del Paco, a medieval fortress dating back to the 15th century. Don't miss it by subscribing now and setting notifications. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on The Memory Seekers. Happy travels.